Akim. Oh. oh, my book. I like this book. It's a nice hardcover book. Ah, nice binding and everything. Exodus 40, verse 1. Where the bar Yahweh al Masha la Amar, verse 2, by Yahwom ha Kadash Hara a Shayan ba a Kad la Kadash Tha Kwa Yam at Ma Shakan ha al ma wa aid verse 3 wa shamath sham because sham is his name and there too right oh yeah sham it's like it means there and name also oh no, that's what it says, Sham. Yeah. All right, let me go. Sham at a ra one ha i da white. White. Verse three. It says, Sham. I have a watch map. Oh, oh, I see. Watch your map, Sham. So it can mean their end name also. Was a cut. I'll ha a run at hab ha ra cut. Verse four. Wa ha ba at at ha sha la kun. Wa i ra cut at i ra kawa. Waha ba at at ha ma ha ma na raha waha ai la yat at na ra na rat ya ha verse five wa na sa sa ha at ma zabak ha Zahab la kwa ta rat la panya ara one ha ai dat washa bat washa mat at ma saka ha pa sak la ma sha kan verse six wa ya wa na sa ta ha at ma zabak ha ai la ha la panya pathak ma sha kan aha ahal ma wa aid verse 7 wa na sat as ha ka war ba yan ah hal ma wa aid wa ba yan ha ma za bak wa na sat sham ma yam verse 8 wa sha mat at ha ka taza ra sa ba yab wa na sat at ma sa ka sha ai ha ka taza ra 
verse 9 wala kwa kat at sham sham shaman hama sha kaha wama sha kat at hama sha kan wa at kal a shara bawa wa ko da sa a kara yawa wa haya kodash verse 10 wa ma sha kat at ma za bak wa ko dash sa at hama za bak wa haya hama za bak ko dash ko dash yam sha at ha ka ya nawa wa ko dash sa atwa verse 12 wa ha ko ra bat at ha run wa at ban yawa al pa fa ah hal ai wa ra ka tazat asam ka no ba ma yam verse 13 wa ha la ba shat at a ha ka daya ha kodash wa ma sha kat atwa wa kwa da wa kwad shat ha sawa wa ka wa kahan lawa verse 14 wa at banyawa sa kwa la ba shat at a cut a thumb ka ashara ma shak sa at haba ya hum wa ha ya saha la hai yat la hum ma shaka thumb wa la ha ha na i le wam la da ra sum verse 16 wa ya aish masha kokol ashara taza wa ha ya hawa atwa kan aish aisha verse 17 wa Yahaya ba ka dash hara a sha one ba shan shan yat ba ha ka ba akar la ka dash hawa kwam ha ma sha kan wa ya kwam masha at hama shakan wa ya san at hadan yawa wa ya sham at kora sha wa ya ya yak yawa wa ya kwam at Hi, I'm Wad Yawa, verse 19. Why?
apa hal air hama syakan wa ya syamat maka sah ha a hal air ya ma laha kaha syara ta at masha verse 20 wa ya kwak wa ya than at ha a ai at ala a ya sham at had ba da yam ai ha a run wa ya than at ha ka pa a run mala a Ha wa ya ya shakan wa ya at ham ma saka wa ya saka ail ha a one ha a ha ai da wa Hasha verse went to Waya Than at Ham Hasha La Khan Baa Ha La Ail Ail Ya Raka Hamasha Khan Taza Panha Ma La Para Raka I love Yahawa Ka Ashura Tazawaha Yahawa at Masha or twenty four Waya Sham at Hama Na Raha Baa hal ma wa ail na ka na kak ha sha la khan ail ya ra ka ha ma sha khan na ga da ha verse 25 wa ya ail ha na rat la panya ya ha wa ha ka ashara Tazawa ha Yahawa at Masha verse 26 wa ya sham at mazabak ha zahab ba ha halia ba ha hal ma wa aid la panya ha para cut verse 27 wa ya kwa tar ail Yawa kwa ta rat sama yam ka ashura tazawa ha ya hawa at masha verse 28 wa ya sham at masaka hapa sak lama sha khan verse 29 wa at ma zabak ha ai la ha Sham Pathak Ma Shakan Ha 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 La Ma Wa Ail Wa Ya Ail Ail Ya Wa At Ha Ail La Ha Wa At Ma Ha Ma Na Ka Ha Ka Ashra Ta Yahawa at Masha verse thirty Waya Sham at Ha Ka Yar Bayan A Hal Ma Wa Ail Wa Ba Yan Ma Zabak Wa Ya Than Sham Shamha Ma Yam La Ra Taza 
Tazaha, verse 31, Waya Waraq, Tazawa, Ma Manwa, Masha, Ma Masha, 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 Baba Am Al Ha Hal Ma Wa Ain Wa Ba Kwa Ra Ba Tham Al Hama Ha Maza Ba Ka Tazawa Ka Ashura Tazawaha Yahawa at Masha verse thirty three Waya Kwam at Ha Ka Tazara Saba Yab Shawala Ma Zabak Waya Tan at Ma Saka Air Ha Ka Tazara Kal Masha at Ha Mala a Ka Ha Mala a Verse 34 Waya Kas Ha I Nan at Ha Hal Ma Wa Aid Wa Ka Ba Wad Yahawa Ma La Hama Shakan Verse 35, Wa la a ya kal masha la ba wa a al ha 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 ma wa al kaya shakan al ya wa ha ai nan wa ka ba wad yahawa mala a at hama shakan verse 36 wa ba ha hai la wat nan ma ai hama shakan yasa aiwa banya yasha ala bakal Masa I ya hum verse thirty seven wa am la a ya ay la ha ha ay nan wa la a ya sa wa ya sa ay wa ay ya ya wam ha ay la sa wa verse thirty eight. This last verse. Kaya, I, Nan, Yahawa, Ail, Hama, Shakan, Yahwa, Mom, Wa, Ash, Tha, How, Ya, Layela, Banwa, La, Yan, Ya, Kal, Bayat, Yasha Allah, Bakal, Ma sa I ya hum. Whoop. That's it. That's the end of Exodus chapter 40. Hmm? Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, it's hard. I'm trying to build up my vocabulary. The numbers get to me, you know that. <laughs> oh, you build up the numbers, huh? The numbers? Yeah, get get numbers. I know, Ark 1. Shash, I think it's 3. Oh. 
Like, I just, you know, do the legal right? Google that and say, oh, but, uh, uh, right, 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 So, tabernacle set up, 40, the set up of the tabernacle and the glory of the, the glory of, of the Mosai. So, you find the tabernacle set up, you can see um, Exodus 1 to 9, and Nine, one to ten. The setup of the tabernacle. <clears throat> Exodus chapter forty, verse one. So there was Hebrews nine, one to ten. Exodus twenty-five, one to twenty-five. Uh, Exodus. Exodus 25, 1 to 9. Yeah. Hebrews 9, 1 to 10. Yeah. Uh. So. Exodus 40, verse 1. Moses saying, on the first day of the first month, that is the, the, the new moon. All right. Shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation? Set up the tabernacle. The first day? The first day of the first month? Uh, the first of the year. There you go. And then the 14, 15 is the Passover. The first year. First day of the first month in this day and age, just say January 1st, Happy New Year, right? Was it January? Was it um, Janus the, with, the, with the two faces, the old and the new? And they like to put the, the young baby and the old man, <laughs> and everybody's white, of course, you know. Yeah. On the first day of the first month, shall thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with the veil. And thou shalt bring in the table and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, the seven branch candlestick, and light the lamp thereof. Like we have a candlestick here, we try to set up a candlestick, seven branches here for the service. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense. We have incense here on both sides. What, what is the incense? We have uh -huh. frankincense. We have frankincense before the ark of the testimony and put the hangings of the door to, to the tabernacle. So we have a he said, we set up the tent, we, we, we set it up right now, we have a door. So you, you go to, you're hanging up the door, so it's like a, a, a cloth door, and we go through. 
So not everybody can just peek inside, right? What's going on inside there, right? So my yes, so you know, the, uh, David Tome is coming up. As you see here, it's instructed that he take the the Ark of the Testimony and put it with, with the uh, cover it with the veil. So when we read in Leviticus the 16th chapter, when the high priest has to go in, yeah. that's when the Most High instructs uh, Aaron that he come not at all within the veil before the mercy seat, that he die not. Because it wasn't a place where he was. That's the reason why the Most High had it covered. You from always just going before the mercy seat. And then he said, if he's going to do that, if he when, he when he comes in on the day of the mm-hmm. atonement, he has to come with the, the uh, incense burning. So that can pre- present a cloud over the mercy seat that he died not. So mm-hmm. a lot of it is instruction based and in that you have to follow to attention to detail. He's like, all right, I'm covering the mercy seat with the veil covering the ark with the veil and now it's covered for a reason all the other stuff within the within the tabernacle you deal with but you just don't go back there all the time they're like ah let me go just clean and just be out here just doing my own nah (laughs) i said don't do that if you do you're going to die now if you do want to come in you got to have the instant burning um to cover up the mercy seat that's what uh, you, that's what we're going to read a bit of in Leviticus 16 of the Day of Atonement, as far as why the ceremony goes for the atoning of Israel and the priests. That uh, the Most High kept that sacred, but the holies are holies. But it's so bad that when Israel sinned and the other nations come up in there and they come up in there and they take the Ark of the Covenant away and all of that, you know. So it's like the ordinary person, we can't go in there. And, right. and the priest can't go in there but like once a year, but they come in there and they pillage and they take everything. Right. It's like, wow. So like Eli heard that the ark was taken and he fell back and broke his neck. Yeah. So it's like, it's a bad thing. We've seen everything going out like that. Everything, everything, gold and all that stuff. That's when Israel sinned and this nation take us over and just take our stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll read that in the pocket book. In uh, Maccabees, second. verse f- five, I guess. What you just, what you just mentioned. Oh. As far as how nations come in and uh, take our stuff. Just walk up in there, you know, boldly walk up in there and just take the stuff. Right, the second Maccabees, fifth chapter. Second Maccabees. 15th verse to the uh, 19th verse. The second Maccabees 5 6, 15 it says, Yet <clears throat> was he not content with this, but presumed to go into the most holy temple of all the world. All right, so this is uh, uh, Antiochus and them when he first came into the, uh, in the power. He had, he had a purpose to go into the temple. Mm. And he would go into Jerusalem and go and you know, exact tribute of it. But it says that, uh, presumed to go into the most holy temple of all the world, Menelias, that traitor to the laws and to his own country, being his guide. So you have one of Israel who was the one who was navigating mm. through to the temple. It says, and taking the holy vessels with polluted hands and with profane hands, pulling down the things that were dedicated by other kings of the augmentation and glory and honor of the place. And so hardy was Antiochus in mind that he considered not that the Lord was angry for a while for the sins of them that dwelt in the city, and therefore his eye was not upon the place. So all those things that was dedicated didn't mean anything anymore. Mm-hmm. Most I was like, he didn't really care so much about the things that were dedicated as much as the people being obedient unto him. So once Israel started to sin, it said he took his eyes off that place. Meaning he wasn't protecting or caring about the city or the temple and the things inside that were dedicated. It says, for he had, for had they not been formally wrapped in many sins, this man, as soon as he had come, had forthwith been scourged and put back from his presumption as Heliodorus was when Seleucus the king sent to view the treasury. Nevertheless, 
Yahweh did not choose the people for the place's sake, but the place for the people's sake. So I had more care over Israel than the city. Right? So when we look at it, it wasn't at the most high created this grand old place, and here it is, he loves the place, and all of a sudden we just happen to come in. No, mm -hmm. he loved the people and created the place and everything else for us. Now, once we disobey mm -hmm. him, it's like a parent does to his child, he takes those things away. Right? Or he, he, he removes them so that he has no enjoyment of it. Right? Or he prevents you from going in. So that's why the Lord took us out of Israel. Why the Most High had these nations come and take the things out of the temple of the tabernacle because we, we didn't care for the Most High, let alone the things that he had given us. Wow. So I think, don't we have temple guards? At the, I mean, all the way have temple guards, right? To you keep the, um, temple guard. To you keep. Got, you got to remember, you got the priest there. The priest was like soldiers themselves. <laughs> the priest went out in fort too. Judas and all of them were like, they were priests. He was a Levites, right? And, and well, this whole thing we're reading the Maccabees was about how they went and fought for Israel. So it's not like you know uh, the priests were the priests themselves were an arm. That's like when we do we used to do our holidays back in the day. Yeah. And we went to a uh, like the hotel. And what happened is that yeah, listen, we're gonna stay. We're gonna hold post. Right? <laughs> Who's holding post? The priests. <laughs> all of us is God. All of us is priests. But the priests gonna hold post to make sure that you don't have nobody just strangling on into the into the uh, yeah, holiness. Let's walk right in and say, well, yeah. what's, what's going on here? What you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing, I forget which king, when he wanted to come in and offer sacrifice, the priest had to stop like, listen, what are you doing? Because they're the ones that's guarding the temple. And he wanted like we needed to have Vanessa come up in the tabernacle to prevent people. Nah, the Levites was doing that. Yeah, why can't I, why can't I do it too? Yeah. Which was that tonight? Uh, yeah. What? Second Maccabees, the fifth chapter, verses fifteen to nineteen. Second Second Maccabees five, fifteen to nineteen. Yeah. Why can I touch all this stuff in here? Why can I touch it? I forgot who who tried to touch it. Is that much? Yeah, just not any any hands is going there and trying to touch this stuff, you know. You know, why should you be priest? Why why can I be priest too? Okay. Verse six. Exodus forty verse six. And thou shalt set set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the lever between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shall put water therein. So these laver, they're supposed to wash their hands of of water, like they wash their hand and they and their feet before they come into the coming um, come into the in in the temple. And thou shalt set up the court round about and hang up the hangings of the court gate so we have the court around the whole thing so the average person can just just like peeking and see what's going on in it right and thou shall verse 9 and thou shalt take the anointed oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is therein and shall hollow it and all the vessels thereof and it shall be holy so everything is holy in there and i think it was it belshazzar it was just drinking out of the holy vessel and you know all this stuff is holy just a priest supposed to touch touch these things and after they they took us over and they took everything out and it was drinking out of the holy vessel the most i checked in i think that's in daniel right somewhere in daniel it's interesting you said you know when you read it, it says, the only thing is holy holy meaning separate sanctified right so this was like you said separate only for 
of specific purpose. Only the Levites had, and, and within the Levites, only certain family members had certain rights to deal with certain things, right? We collectively are a holy people. When you look at it, we're separated from all the other nations, right? So we collectively only have certain rights to do certain things for the most high that the other nations don't can't do, right? Same thing, Judah is within the nation, He's supposed to be separated or holy as the kings within Israel. Only Manasseh can't come up and say they're going to be the kings over Israel. That's not their position. That's not how the Most High set it up. So within the law, the Most High is the one that determines and dictates how certain things has their proper order within our within our nation. That's mean, why when we read the scripture, sometimes it calls us strangers. Like no stranger shall touch this thing. No stranger can do this. It ain't talking about the other nations. It's talking about Ephraim. It's talking about Ishakar. It's talking about Judah. Because we are strangers to this. We're not supposed to be up in there doing that. You're a foreigner. You're alien. That's not your job. So the Lord has said that we're strangers. For example, I was thinking about Ephraim. Is, is the most I dealing with Moses only? You know, Aaron and Miriam and there's like dealing with Moses. What up? You know, why just him? You know, we're here too. You know, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's where we get only begotten, right? Like how the Most High said, Yahweh Shah was his only begotten. When you read the New Testament, it says that Isaac was Abraham's only begotten son, mm -hmm. but he had another son. <laughs> yeah, son. What about so, Ishmael, you know? Yeah, what about his other sons? Like, they, 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 he only had yeah. one son? No, Couture. a son, a certain, a son for a specific purpose. Trying to fit that. You can't put someone else in there. It's only one. So they're trying to make some other books and try to put Ishmael in there, Ishmael, Ishmael. It's like that's his son too, but separate, right? Yeah. It's the holy means separate, right? Yeah. And verse ten, Exodus forty, verse ten. And thou shalt anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all his vessels, and sanctify the altar. And it shall be an altar most holy. And thou shalt anoint the lever and his foot and sanctify it. Verse 12. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons unto the door of the tabernacle and wash them with water. So all this stuff is, you know, the most I specifically and think about Aaron's two son offering strange fire to the most high. And and the most I killed him. Because the most I didn't require that. Oh, so you see um aligning it with the baptism. Oh, wash. Yeah. Wash you make it clean? That's yeah, that's that's uh when we look through the law that water was was always apparent or known within Israel as a part of our custom as far as for cleansing us when we wanted to be presented or able to be presented before the Most High, right? That was what made us clean physically, like you're going to go wash yourself. So for, for these priests, these men, you go and participate in this service, what does the Most High say do? Bring them all here and wash them, right? They got to be washed with water before they could go and, and do the service. Even the high priest, before he can go do his service with yeah. an attack. He got to wash himself before he presents himself before the Most High. The first time Israel presented themselves during the time of Moses at the foot of the mountain. Most yeah. High said, keep, keep, keep them away from their wives. Three days. Yeah. Then let them sanctify themselves and wash before they come and present themselves before me at the foot of the mountain. So it was always something that we knew that was what was going to physically cleanse us, but it mm -hmm. took upon a spiritual connotation when we needed to get ourselves right with the Lord. Like, and that's why I tell them the song. Well, how do you, how do you, uh, how does a man correct his way? This is, uh, well, how does a man cleanse his way? By taking him to, to the word of the Most High, right? That's how you cleanse yourself, not physically, but spiritually. Then it, it follows through to the physical. Everything starts physically. I mean, everything starts spiritually first. Yeah, because in um, Psalms 51, oh. Uh. One of the Psalms of ooh, Psalms 
51 and 7. Ah, yes. Psalms 51 and 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Talking about making look like Esau physically. <laughs> so spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual, yeah. Psalms 51 and 7. Scripture to wash. Wash them scriptures. Yeah. I used to think that meant physical, that in other words, clean, go before the door, stink, and dirty, you know, physical type of form. Well, what you just read? No, I'm talking about the top of that. Okay, scripture. So they actually, they, before. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, that was. A physical yeah, part of the ceremony. They actually, not that that represented, you know, you couldn't go before the Lord. Stink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so when you take a bath, most, most people do. They go out and they really, you know, bathe. They say, clean the cleanliness, we clean the cleanliness. Before you come to church, you, you know, before the Sabbath, you set, a clothes, you, you know, you set out your clothes and special clothes that you want to wear or whatever you know you know if you have only one shirt one pants and one shoes and stuff like that you clean up shine it up because like in the the sunday churches and they trying to you know tell people to, to fix up themselves to look good mm -hmm. present themselves you know it's the same thing almost like with the um with the garments with the fringes it tells you in uh in numbers as far as for um having uh, fringes in the four corners of your garments but the fringe these fringes are supposed to be symbolic of the law of a commandment right mm -hmm. but then you get into the like the new testament and yahweh tells the uh tells john the revelator as far as for um those who ain't clothed and what's going to happen they're going to be found naked now he ain't talking about the actual <laughs> garments there like you can have on a physical garment with fringes on them, but still be found naked. Yeah. Because your your spiritual garment ain't on. You ain't spiritually applying the commandments and the fringes that's that you read about in the, in the scriptures to your life, to your um spirituality. So then you can still be found naked with a garment on. Yeah, because somebody can I was even coming coming to church this morning, it's like, yeah, yeah. I wish you guy had on a garment on. So he you know, a garment with the fringes on. So if you had it on, it'd probably be like what is this? Somebody gave it to me. I put it on. I don't know what it is. Huh? See, he, he have it on yet, but he don't know what it means. Right. Stuff, you know. And that's why we made. That's what Paul made the case about uh, circumcision. When everybody else was getting on him to get all the brothers that was rolling with him circumcised, he's like, it's not that big a deal. Unless I, if, if he don't have it circumcised, what, what difference is going to make that circumcised then? Just to fulfill the law. But he ain't thinking about it. all these brothers that's out here right now. And when they first was born, they got circumcised. Is it benefiting them right now? No. Yeah, or even sometime later on in their life, and they're like, I don't know, I just do it because yeah, I just do it, you know? Spiritually in tune with it, with the most high, and what that uh, token means is benefiting you. I'm profitable. So, for the most I say, that you gotta wash them with water. I think the most I say, oh, they, that, that they die not. Verse 13, Exodus 40, verse 13. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt bring his sons and clothe them with coats. And thou shalt anoint them as thou didst Anoint their father, this is Aaron, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office, for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generation. Like when that parallel is between the priest and the king, because both of them was anointed. The priest was anointed and the kings were anointed. Before they Lord. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When um David anointed Solomon, yeah. he said like, "Well, Samuel anointed David. Well, yeah. Samuel anointed Saul. Yeah, and all of them, all of them was anointed." So in front of everybody, he's like, "Wow, you know, he's chosen." Yeah. And and the two of them, um, when you look at how 
a king, a king, you know, we kind of envision the king to be decked out, probably got a crown on, yeah. this, that, and the third. But now as we read about the priests having all this gold, ephah, and this on, fine linen, and having a mitre Ooh. with this all, like, he's now decked out, mm. like, being the high priest. Nice, so these, too. These people were, were uh, positioned to be the main two figure figureheads within the nation, the king and the priest. So, I mean, even now we try to, you know, when we come up here, we try to have some kind of garment on, some kind of some kind of robe, make make us look a little different, you know, than our regular clothes out there. Verse sixteen. This did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him. So did he. So the Mosai told Moses and Mosai, and Moses did it. Verse 17, and it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. So according to say with the pictures I have, they have like, you know, cords and everything and set everything up and like, you know, framing to keep everything up because I see the pictures of uh, the tabernacle is all set up and set it up upright because I think it's, it's movable until later on we have the temple. So, like, so this, when we read back in the uh, second verse, um, well, verse 17, right? Yeah, on chapter yeah. 40, verse 2. We yeah. said in the first day, that was just instruction. Um, if, I'm, if, I'm not, if I'm reading that wrong, y'all tell me. That was just the instruction on when the Most High was telling him it had to be done. It wasn't as if that was the day in which they're having that conversation. This is like a, a year later on. Right, but that's what I mean. I don't know if it's a year because it's not saying that this was on the first day of the first month. It's saying that the Lord speaking to Moses saying on the first day of the first month, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Mm -hmm. So then it says in verse 17, and it came to pass in the first year, on the first month, in the second year, that's when they read it out. But he couldn't read it out. It be on New Year. Right? It had to be on the new year. On the following new year. Where, whenever that new year was going to come up, that's when he had to start it. And that's when, you know, you know that's what I'm reading in the second verse. That he's saying when that day comes, that's when you start doing it. Right? Because yeah. okay. something in here is like, not this first new year, it's the second new year. You know, we're going to do this and do that. <laughs> Sometimes here is like, after you know the first Christmas is gone, then it's the second. We're gonna prepare for the second Christmas that's coming the next year. You know, buying all the goods and make sure we have everything. <laughs> so, but this is the most I said. Set up everything for the second year. Verse eighteen. And Moses reared up the tabernacle, reared up, set it up, and fastened his socket and set up the boards thereof, and put in the bars thereof and reared up his pillars set up the pillars and everything it, it's set up so the average person can see inside they can say oh yeah that's the holies of holies that, that oh that's that, 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 that that's that everything is done in there verse 19 and he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle and put covering of the tent above upon it as the Lord commanded Moses. Yeah, because I would think about how everything was set up. I guess because they do it, have it open so you can kind of see what's going on in there, but it, it has a covering over it. So I guess somebody can climb up to a high elevation and kind of look inside what's going on. So I had like a cover over it. Verse 20. And he put the testimony 
into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. Verse 21, and he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. Because doing with the Ark of the Covenant, it's it's in a certain section. Like say the, the priest can only go there once a year. But the other time of the year, he's doing like other sacrifices around it. That's the mark? Yeah. Although the, the Ark of the Covenant is in a special area. That's that he can only go there once a year. But around it, he's doing the sacrifices and the offering. And the showbread and all that stuff is preparing the showbread, I think, daily, right? And set up everything around it. And in the 20th verse, it says, And he took and put the testimony into the ark. So the testimony itself uh, signifying uh, tablets, the two tables yeah. of stone that's in the ark. And then we know it's. Um, and Aaron rod and all that stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, what was the other things that was in the ark? Yeah, it's in Hebrew, I think, guys. It's in Hebrew. Oops. Somewhere in Hebrew. Hebrews. Verse 20. And it's in Mount Nebo that Jeremiah hid. All that stuff is right there right now. This is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 3. Oh, verse. It says, And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. So inside there, you had the golden censer to burn the, the incense, and then you had the Ark of the Covenant that had those three things in it. Amazing. That's sitting preserved for thousands of years right now. Oh. And they, they, they're trying to find it, yeah, but they can't find it. Indiana Jones tried to find it. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I've read so much on that, you know, like modern day stuff. That they, I saw this thing got through all of it. And then it used to be called Mount Hood, but also back in the North I mean, back in the North East. What was called Mount Hood? Where the ark is supposed to be at today. Mount Nebo. Yeah, well, Nebo, but then it's also called Mount Hood. Oh, I don't so know. Like, they, they, I think they got their mouths mixed up. Yeah, they even got food to the bed. Who said this? I see a lot of modern day stuff that comes on that's talking about concerning the, uh, where the ark is at, all kind of stuff. Like one time, someone who was a doctor, you know, a medical doctor, he, matter of fact, he specialized in it. He tends to use one of those things, those probes or something to stick up the person or down their throat. And um, he drilled a hole and he claimed like he was in the, in the cave or something. He said he actually seen it, but it was covered up. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if he had gotten that close to it, he would have done so dead. He would have never came after the mountain. No. So that's why that's why the is says trust in the Lord with all that heart, right? Because you're gonna have listen, when someone have that means he found it, right? That means he found it. If you were able to drill a hole and see it, right? When the most I said it was gonna be hidden, right? Now he's uncovered the mystery to know what this is. I see here's what she's saying, right? You can pull it up. Uh it's actually in the Hebrew it says pas, 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 
this is uh, the biblical book of Deuteronomy translate Pasagahar or Pisgah as the name of a mountain, usually referring to Mount Nebo, regions directly east of the Jordan River and just northeast of the Dead Sea. And it says Mount Nebo in English. It says it's the highest among a handful of Pisgah summits. So uh, what does it say in the Hebrew Deuteronomy? So it might say Pisgah there in the Hebrew. You read that. Deuteronomy 34, I know it's in the last chapter of Deuteronomy. Look that up and see what the Hebrew word is there. Deuteronomy 34. Bible hub, that's my favorite hub. Interlinear. <laughs> Oh, what was the last scripture? Was that Zephalon or Zechariah? Right. For, for verse 20, Hebrews 9 and, 9 and 4. Oh, before the one that's the monster. Uh, yeah. Is it Zechariah or Zephalon? Uh, it was like chapter 3 something. It says in the bottom. I heard him say that. Was it Zechariah or Zephalon? Look at the top of Pisgah, right? Right, first one. Right. Some of the Pisgah, which is on the faces of Jericho. Over against Jericho. Say Deuteronomy 34. Just now they say Hebrew, but what was for Hebrew? Um, I don't remember if he said anything. I know we read Psalm 51 and 7. Oh, 2 Maccabees 5? Verse 5, 2 Maccabees 5, 15 to 19. Oh, I have that. I have you guys. I have. You, you said Psalm 51 and 7. After that, I thought Shemar said, said a verse. Hebrew 9. Yeah. Hebrew, 9, 9, Hebrew 9 and 4. What was that again? Hebrews 9, 3 to 4. Okay, Hebrews 9, 3 to 4. I thought it was going before that. Yeah. I thought he said like Zach Ryan or something. Um, not that I recall. I must have heard some things. I thought he, I thought he said Zach Ryan. Okay. Yeah. It was Hebrews 9, verse 3 and 4. Yeah, come on. Come on. I thought he said Zechariah. So, if we're about Mount Nebo, that Jeremy hit it. It's in the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second Maccabees. Second Maccabees chapter two. two. No, it's to say where the Ark of the Covenant is. Six. So. So the ark is in Mount Nebo. I know they, the Ethiopians are trying to claim that they have it, but they don't have it. They're having some cave or whatever, so on and so forth. And I've heard so many stories, but then the only ones I really believe is the ones that are mentioned in the scriptures concerning Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the only ones I believe is the ones that are it's the scripture that you should talk about the heart of the child. Right. This is this is yeah. this is this is good. This is in the scripture. It's good in Deuteronomy 34 and 1. And it's called the Pisca also. 
just we just don't usually call it Mr. Smith's hair. Also, it's called uh, Abu Rim. Yeah. 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 Get thee up into this mountain, Abarim, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab that is over against Jericho, and behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for possession. And die in the mount where thou goest up. So we know them. Uh, um, Moses died there in Mount Nebo. So here it's saying, go into the mountain. Abarim. Now, if it's calling that mountainous area and then going into a specific part of the mount, mm. uh, because even the prophecy when he, when the Mosai was wroth with uh, Moses because he said he didn't sanctify the people, yeah. he told him then, when you read back in Numbers, to go up to this Mount Abarim and look north, east, south, and west and see all that was going to be around. But I'm going to give it to Israel, but you're not going to go and be able to do it. Charge Joshua to lead the people over there. And it's the same, the same thing. If you read that, it's like Numbers 27. Right. So what are these verses again? Um, Abba Rebels and Numbers, what's the verse on? Somewhere. 27. Numbers. Numbers 27 and 12. 27. 12. It said, and the Lord said to Moses, get thee up into this Mount Amorim and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. Okay. So, you'll, so, you know, whether um, I have to go into the, have to look up the meanings of Amorim. I think Pisgah, this is like hill. One of the footnotes in, the, in, my, in my scripture says hill. And then uh, how that relates to Nebo. Abram, Fisca, and Nebo, we see what the coalition of the names are together. Well, we know it's the same, it's the same place. I think Abram is like a, it's like region, region beyond, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of makes, makes sense when, in, in the case of how the Most High is leading Israel to go, uh, to uh, lead Moses to take the children of Israel to Israel? <laughs> That's what I'm bugged down on. Taking the children of Israel to the land of Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. Because this was, you know, we, we sometimes based on the event or based on what was happening, we named that that. So now region beyond makes sense of us coming out of Egypt and we're going to this place. We're going to now with the most side of leadness, but Moses is not going to be able to enter into it because of uh, him not sanctifying the people. The most I said it was not going to be him, it's going to be Joshua. Caleb, that was going to answer him. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to Exodus 40, 40, verse 22. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the side of the tabernacle, northward, without the veil. Verse 23, and he oh, said. So we were writing down Deuteronomy 32 and 49 as well, right? Oh. Let's see, Deuteronomy. What would uh, Hans Samak read? Deuteronomy 32, 49. I kind of read it, but we didn't know if we noted it. Okay. So everybody write that down too. Deuteronomy 32 and 49, along with Numbers 27, 12. So the Ark of the Covenant, or the Ark of the Testament. Well, well that one actually has two names. Actually. So, I wonder, I guess, what the Ark of the Covenant. So, verse. What was Deuteronomy? I didn't hear. Deuteronomy thirty-two and forty-nine. Forty-nine. He 
so so I'm like so I'm like the Jewish people over there in Israel according to Jeremy you know until the most I gather you know Israel again so Amalek is over there no temple no awkward covenant or showbread or anything so it, it can't be there and they're catching hell over there and they said they're gonna beat their swords into plowshares it's not happening <laughs> Uh, uh, suicide, suicide bombs them over there and all kind of craziness and all kind of abomination that's happening in the land yeah reading isaiah one and seven i read that earlier what, what, what was that? no i'm talking about in the land of israel right what, what, what's going on over there oh yeah, i don't know that one like what i like what i read earlier seven your country is desolate your cities are burned with fire your your land strangers devout it in your presence and it is desolate and it's overthrown by strangers you go there in israel right now there's a whole bunch of strangers there Guns. it's like yeah, who, who are these people is not doing all that stuff because they bought that democracy there and turned the people into homosexuals they don't like that so mark you have something to read Oh, that verse, uh, Zechariah 12, 2 to 3. Zechariah 12, 2 to 3. It says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, and they shall be in the seas, both against Judah and against Jerusalem, or Israel. Verse 3, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Right? So you can look at it both uh, the people and the land, because um, we have become like a burden unto all nations, right? Everyone burdens themselves with us. Whatever we are, we catch that flat. And then in the same token, even the land, because everybody, even though Esau is in there, is against. Jerusalem against the who they pres, who they presume to be the Jews. So now everybody, those in the Middle East, the Arabs, the Elamites, all of them, they want to do what? Bomb the hell out of out of the hell out of Israel because of what's there. But in burdening themselves and putting themselves in the street straight against it, it has become a thorn in their side. It's become a thorn in Esau's side, right? Because there's been war ever since they got in that land. There's young no young, peace ever. Young Kippur war. <laughs> war, war, war. And also, uh, the second Kings, the seventeenth chapter, when they came into the land, it's getting ate up by the lions. Mm -hmm. Yep, Moshe turned the lions <laughs> on to go eat them up. <laughs> right? It's always been. It's like when they when they took the Ark of the Covenant as you're reading out of Exodus. Now what happened? Moshe plagued them. Wait, wait, wait. Right? Plagued Ham. Yeah, plagued <laughs> Ham when they took the Ark of the Covenant, and then they came back and tried to give gifts when they when they returned the Ark, but the Moshe jacked them up with hemorrhoids and anything else. It's like when you when you come and you burden yourself burden yourself with Israel or of the Most High's possessions, that's a plague on you. It ain't gonna be a happy a happy state. You're gonna go through some things until it's returned right back to its rightful owner, right? So that's why the world is in total chaos because Israel is not where it's supposed to be to bring everything in order to put everything in its proper order. Until that happens, everything's going to be, you're going to have they had a bombing in London, they're going to have a bombing over here, a shooting over here, this, that, and the third, all over the place. Earthquakes, yeah. typhoons, this, that, and the third, because of us. <laughs> Everything is in flux because of us, the people, not just the land, but the people. I know sometimes other nations might come by and say, oh yeah, the problem in America is, is those blacks. <laughs> those blacks. Black Americans. Black. 
Americans that are burdensome to this. Why did Second Kings? Now that was the Africans when he sent the lions on them, right? Mm -hmm. That wasn't right. Yeah. That was, yeah. 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 They said he was going to teach them how to. Yeah, they took our priests to go and try to teach them uh, how to how to you know be priests or whatever in the land and rule like how the priests were or to be like how the priests were because the priests were like the figureheads of the nation as far as for keeping the laws, doing the sacrifices yeah. and, and things. So now, like you said, they, the low side that all jack, uh, happened to them. Yeah, all right, let's go get them Levites and bring them back in here and kind of show us how everything and maybe everything be all right with us then if we do it according to how they, how they want it to be done. But that still wasn't right because they weren't the right people. They weren't the right people, nah. So what happened? I think I forgot the story. Nah, but keep them doing all, just like how I just read in the Maccabees, the Most High over time would allow them to, to inhabit the land. And when Yahweh says, go not into the ways of Samaritans, yeah. enter ye not, right? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house because they in the land. The Samaritans is in the land. Them Cushites and Ethiopians is in the land. But the lions stop eating them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they ain't eat them all. I'm <laughs> 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 sorry, the lions gonna eat all the hell But it was a it was a plague unto them. And then they went and did it. But like we just read in Maccabees, the Most High allowed them to come and flourish and dwell in the land because of our sin. Now Esau then came in. You got uh, what's his, what's King Herod and all them. He's king in, in Judea. Why? Because of Israel sin. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Edomite, yeah, Edomite king. king in our land. King in Israel. Yeah. Mm, I want to kill us too. Like yeah. killing some of us too. And even the Romans even killed Christ. The, a king, you know? Oof. Oh. So when when Yahweh Shai Jesus was going to be born, it's like, who's this king? Let, let me find out. Let me find out when the star and all his his star, you know. He wanted to kill Christ. It's like, yeah, because I think when you read further along in Acts, you had some of the Edomites who were learned in our history, they were learned in our laws, learned in our history. So over time, when we started gotten that stir about the Messiah being born, it's like, all right, what does this mean? Because right? you know you gonna have certain people like, all right, it's our time to rule now. And everybody's like, what? Gotta go find that little baby. <laughs> right? I don't want my rulership and my power to end. So they would have did it because you, they knew what we were waiting for. Is a is is a threat to their rulership. Yeah. And even and even a little bit now in nowadays now, oh, a lot of Hebrews like going out there teaching people in the streets. You know, in the streets and social media, whatever, but, but we're out in the street and we're teaching people the correct way. It's like we are a threat to their rulership because we're telling them what's, what's going to happen to their rulership and so on and so forth. Right. First, we're bringing out the truth to pull down all the lies about their kingdom. And then the consequence is your kingdom's going to fall, you're going to be destroyed, and this is what's coming. Right. So once you uncover the lies, because you can just go out there and say, yeah, I'm going to be next, I'm going to be next. It's like, God, you just crying wolf. But then you start yeah. exposing all the lies about that individual, or that people, their kingdom, and it's tr the truth. But then it's like, man, you're right. <laughs> what's next? Oh, you want to know what's next? This is what's next, right? You don't believe it? Stand and watch. It's coming. And, and all this stuff that, that's happening that terror shall make him afraid on every side. And it's like we're reading it right there, we don't, we don't have like guns and knives and weapon, you know, military and all of that stuff. But coming out with the with the scriptures, the information. A lot of people, this Elam and my job, he's like, yeah, he's sort of guys, and as, yeah, I saw you guys out there teaching and bringing out so much information. And it's like, wow. Because as time goes by, we get access to more information. And we show that what they wrote in their books and their history, you know, and how things played out, you know, or it's going to play it out in the future. Esau is like, wow, yeah, what do, what do we do now, you know? <laughs> but and going back to um, their rulership, when, when he ordered that they kill the baby Jesus, right? Because he thought that was a threat. But in reality, it really wasn't a threat because he wasn't coming to take over them at that time. He was just coming to teach Israel 
show Israel their sin. So he still would have had his power when Jesus came. But, he, but, but they say right, he didn't know that. Yeah, he, don't, he don't understand. But they said the king of the Jews. Right. Right. Because so where is this? Yeah, that from that from what you're saying, yes, he didn't know that. Okay. But for them to say, yeah, the, the king, the Messiah is coming, right. that's a total threat to the current regime. Right. Right? Because it's like, okay, who is this guy and what is he gonna do? It's like now you divert attention away from me. Now everybody's about to follow you and cause insurrection to overthrow me. So I'm gonna I'm nip this in the bud and go try to get rid of them before I even do it. Yeah. Let's go back to Exodus 40, verse 23. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. This is the showbread. Verse 24, and he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. So you can see a picture of the Ark, the ark of Titus. You can see the oh, how the candlestick, how big it was. So it's a big thing, I think, in like a couple of guys carrying it or something. So they stood still and said, yeah, we got everything here. And somebody covered the, the, the candlestick, how big and heavy it was. Verse 26, and he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burned sweet incense thereon as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle, all the hangings around the tabernacle. And he put the altar print by the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation and offered it and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering. And which is Moses. Verse 30. And he set the, le the lever between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water therein to wash with all. So going to wash their hands and their feet. When they come in, they got to do that, that they die not. Verse 31, and Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. Like I saw a movie there, you know, washing their hands and feet. Of the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate so Moses finished the work. So the tabernacle and everything, he set up everything. Verse 34. Verse 34, you can read Numbers 9, 15 to 23. Yeah, for verse 34 coming. For numbers nine fifteen to twenty three. I just want to read numbers nine and fifteen. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony, 
and that evening there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning so, um, Oh, 21 numbers 9 21 and so it was when the cloud abode from evening from even unto the morning and that the cloud was taken up in the morning then they journeyed whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up they journeyed so the cloud taken up and then they journeyed and 22 or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, so it stayed on the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents, stood home in their tents and journeyed not, so they stayed. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. Right. So the most I directing them when to stay or when to journey. Right. We're wandering around in the wilderness for all that period of time. So it said whether it was a few days, a month, or a year. So if it was a the the, the, the chariot just sat there for a whole year mm. <laughs> in the same spot. Right? Wow. That's what they did. That's where they that's where he broke that. He says cloud. It's a cloud, right? But you know it to be the chariot. But then when it came for time when we were about to now go to another area, then they had to take their tents up, pitch it up, and then start journeying. Right, so the chariot was the, the signal point when it was time for us to move. Right, so imagine if you was a heathen, you coming out, you see the chariot sitting over the nation of Israel. I ain't going up one day. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, we know Israel still wild the hell out and started doing, you know, what they weren't supposed to do. Most still killing all So now people are talking about, yeah, yeah, we, you know, let, let's 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 go to the Boy Scouts. Let's learn about setting up tents in in the wilderness out there you know set up tents and we're gonna do this and do that we're gonna you know move tents and move someplace to another location so, so it's like i'm thinking about a tabernacle when we yeah. at the tabernacle we we it's nice to go out there see some brothers some churches that would go out there in some big park and yeah. set up tents go to the home go to um walmart and buy these tents and stakes and all that stuff to set up stuff and they would buy and they would go out there in the park and they would stay for the week. Literally, you notice that, you know, when you think about going out in the park, we always think of Esau going camping. It's like an Edomite. Right? <laughs> Esau used to go to the Great Mountains. But as far as we're just out and playing, this, this is what we were doing in the wilderness, right? We camped in tents, right? And then when it's time to move, we packed them up and left. Hence why we're keeping the Feast of the Tabernacles <laughs> coming up. You don't dwell in your home, you're supposed to dwell in the tent. I was back then. I mean, I gotta leave my house and everything and yeah, going you know, in the tent out in some yeah. park out there yeah. and hearing and hearing oh all that, all that howling uh, and scroll running past by us. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I, I had a, I borrowed, I borrowed my um, this guy my job's tent one year and I, uh, I did it in my, um, in my in the backyard. I went and just stayed in the tent. It's a different experience, especially if you're not one of them uh, people from the south or, you know, been on the country. You a city cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's different. Somebody might rob me or something, you know? It ain't even about, it ain't even about, <laughs> nah, it's not even about robbing. Cause I, like, because um, I'm from, you know, from, Jer from Jersey, you know, Jersey. Well, my parents moved down south to Georgia and, and, uh, and it was kind of rural. It took a while for me to get adjusted to just hearing insects and stuff. Because I didn't hear that stuff like that when I was in the city. Like hearing all the dog ones, different types of animals and insects and things in the evening, or hearing this dead silence. That was every summer. Every summer I used to go to um, uh, spend some of my parents. You can't run run the electricity in there or something like that? <laughs> no, it wasn't. I, no, I wasn't even, no, I wasn't even outside. I'm just saying just being down south. It was different from where I was growing up in the city. In the city, I'm hearing sirens and pops and yelling and noises and all kind of stuff. That was calm to me because I'm, I grew up under it. It's, 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 I grew accustomed to it. But now when it's like silence, and all I'm hearing is thing. Now I start thinking like, you know, you watch some scary movies 
And it's just too quiet. You're like, you know, something coming. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> That's how I felt. So then when I did that, it was a different experience because now I'm really outside of the element. Like, I, I'm in the tent and I'm living. I'm like, man, I wonder what, what is on the outside of me. Is a raccoon going to come up on me? Is yeah. this going to come up on me? Yeah, you start to think of all kind of nonsense Absolutely. instead of thinking about the, the real purpose of doing it. Yeah, and somebody might say, yeah, I got this big generator. It can generate so much electric electricity. Nah, 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 leave it. Leave that because we're supposed to be out there. So you get upset when you get a cricket from you going down. I'm used to it now. I mean, before, the first <laughs> time, especially as a, as a uh, teenager, it was, yeah, it was different. So you would think it was outside. Yeah, I could sleep at night. You're the biggest thing in their noise. They just make the noise over their legs. That's what I'm doing. They're loud. I know. They make some loud noise. And all they do is rubbing their legs. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Plugging myself under the car and. <laughs> I made sure to charge it up. Not to go too far, but it's interesting. You see that? Um, doing that uh, uh, eclipse um, last month? Yeah. I was. Um, yeah, last month I was down south, and and it was a uh, in the path where you can see it. So, and it was a sunny day. So when the eclipse happened, it was like a shade over the whole thing. And what happened? So this was like about one thirty. The crickets came out. It's just like the crickets. crickets came yeah, out. The crickets came out. You start hearing them. They must think because of the way like the, the sun is setting. Right? They must think that hey, it's evening time. And then when the um the clip passed, then the sun came back out, they stopped. Really? Then when the sun set again, <laughs> the crickets came back out. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes y'all must practice. All the nocturnal animals is like, why what's 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 going on? Yeah. Yeah, I remember it's telling my daughter, she said, they got the uh, cloud. I said that was the eclipse. <laughs> So I said it was one when I was a little girl. As someone was saying when Christ was crucified it was in an, an eclipse, and someone was saying that. Because it, it became dark. It was recorded actually by um, these two heathen uh, historians, Fletcher and this other guy named Dallas. He reported about zombies walking the earth. He even reported in like darkness too. Like, if you check out those works, you can use them. You know the script of the truth. We can say, yeah, even your historians even reported that the day when Christ died, weird things were happening. So, you know, you don't believe the Bible, but you believe them. You believe Tacitus and Herodotus, all you guys believe these guys too. Zombies <laughs> don't die. Yeah, like I said, zombies. Yeah, what? Zombies, zombies. You're like, yo, this guy was dead. Look, he's just still walking around here. Two weeks ago, most of like walking dead. You're like, <laughs> Stepping off all crazy. Yeah, check out those two Roman historians. Like I said, I like to use their people yeah. to show what the scriptures are saying. It's like they'll always say, oh, that was written by man. And we go to the books that they wrote, which are written by man too. They believe them. So I say, yeah, even your books tell me. Yes. Send us in the chat. I'll check it out. It does happen, though. Like, maybe it'll be like the physicians that will say that they're deceased. And then they'll take, take the person. And then there's more kids on the oh, they still live. And then call up and say, take the shake off the tail back. They even had one consideration that a child sat up and asked for water, and it was at the funeral service. <laughs> I know them people. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give her water to drink, you know. <laughs> Exodus 40, verse 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord fill the tabernacle. Wow. Everything was like just filled up with a cloud, right? It covered. Verse 36. And when the cloud was taken up tabernacle, the children of Of Israel went to 
others. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the for the for thirty-eight, for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So when we came out of Egypt, this was the same thing like clouds, clouds by day and pillars of, pillars of fire, right? By night. That's in where? Oh, Exodus 13, I think 21. Exodus 13. So when you see clouds and clouds and clouds, you know. Uh, twenty to twenty-two. Oh, Exodus thirteen, twenty. Twenty-nine to twenty-two. Twenty-one is the main verse. If you read twenty to twenty-two, all the details. Exodus thirteen, twenty. Twenty-two. Exodus 13, verse 20 to 22. Exodus 13, verse 20. And they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Itham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord, by day, in a pillar of cloud, to lead them the way, and by night, in a pillar of fire, to give them light to go by day. Verse 22, he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So that's a directive of what, what the people do. So we can able to know, you know, when to go and able to see at night. Now, now looking at this cloud that we see by day, are y'all saying this was a spaceship or was it just a cloud? That the Lord uh, made different from the rest of the clouds. It has to be a different because it, it stood still above them, you know, right. or above the tent. A, a, a special cloud, cloud yeah. Special cloud. So it's like you see the the rest of the clouds them up there moving and and so and so, but but this cloud that stood over, be, stood over them, so. Stand out from the rest of the cloud. Yeah, it has to stand out from the rest of the cloud. Because, first of all, the clouds are like way up in the sky, but this cloud was like, you know, over over them, over the, the in, in front of them. Yeah. So we, we see that it's like, wow, this is a special cloud. So. No, we said about the special cloud. There had to be a, some special cloud different from the other clouds that we see in the sky. Which part are you more about? You still said they needed just the direction, right? Cloud in the sky, right? Yeah, a fire by night. That's why yeah. we know it to be an actual chariot. And then as you read in that last verse, it says, well, this is the cloud of the Lord. Right, it's not just like you know, uh, just regular. This is the cloud of the Lord, and it tells you another um, other chapter that says the Most High speak out of the cloud. So it's just not just a regular cloud. This cloud, the Lord is given instruction from the cloud. So in, in, in the daytime, this was the, this was the chariot. It's the chariot. So, but they describe it as a cloud, right? And that's uh, just, it's, it's the same thing as like. Um, in the book of Psalms 104, verse 30. Read that. Psalms. Psalms 1. Psalms 104, verse 30. Who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters, who make up the clouds his chariot, who walk up upon the wings of the wind.
So this chariot, when it was chariot blocked and was going through the tabernacle, when it said it was over the top of the tabernacle, it was just putting the door, he couldn't get it. So this chariot came down. Yeah, it came down and prevented them from going in. Like, he wasn't going to go into the tabernacle because now it was preventing them from going in. Now we have, um, we were given uh, instruction on when to leave, when to not leave. Uh, when to go in, when not to go in. All this became um, secondary. Now, in Deuteronomy 5, I'm going to read 5 and 22. It says, these words Yahweh spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire and of the thick darkness with a great voice. And Deuteronomy added, 5? Deuteronomy 5.22. Did I say? Yeah, 5.22. These are the words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice. And he added no more, and he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me. Right? So the most high, um, the chariot is the cloud was a chariot, right? And we described it as a cloud because you know back then yeah, it was known as a cloud, but this is like a different cloud. They described it. It, was a, it looked like a cloud in the daytime, but in the night, like a pillar of fire. What was made of a pillar of fire, whatever was illuminating. From the chariot that gave like provided like light on the on the earth and we'll be seeing it so when we read revelations and we're describing um um uh, john the revelator is describing what he's seeing in the vision he's using things that he knows coming in as things that he knows and not what we know it to be called for the term today he's describing the same thing like they had it was like a scorpion or, or a hornet or whatever. And it's like, what is a living foot? And it had metal on it. It was armored. Well, he's looking at a plane. But to him, it's like it's an insect. Yeah, so that's like if we seen something, if we was in the and in, in able to go 50 years in the future and we seen what kind of technology we have around now, describe what we see from here, we probably don't have words for it because we haven't advanced yet. Uh, and he saw that over 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like Ezekiel 1 and 4. Mm -hmm. It say, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself. Mm -hmm. And a brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Keep reading. Verse 5. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So out of the chariot itself came what? The angels. So now in the cloud are the angels. And he's describing what he's seeing. He describes the cloud, and now he's describing the angels that are coming out of the cloud. And what their appearance looked like. Oh, of course, not the dust. She sent mm -hmm. me uh, Revelation 1 and 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, this was Ezekiel 1, 4. Oh, one, one, four, five. Yes. <clears throat> I got one. Which, uh, I can read. Revelation chapter one in, in verse seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. So it says. He is Yahweh Shai, he cometh with clouds. I got him come with the chariot of heaven. I just want to read one, four, eight, eighteen. I just want to read Exodus twenty-four, verse eighteen. Exodus twenty-four, verse eighteen. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up. Into the mount, and Moses was forty days and forty nights. 
So Moses went into the midst of the cloud. Right. You know, when he was there for 40 days and 40 nights, what was going on? Communing with the Most High. Uh, History, I mean, the future, the history and the future. Yes. Yeah, he was, he was chunking. Remember, even Moses prophesied about Yahweh Shah. Most high gave him instruction about Yahweh Shah too. A prophet from the, from the midst of your brethren was going to come. But then he gave him how the earth was created, how the heavens was created. Mm. Moses wasn't there, so he got all of that. And then what was to come? And then what had to be dealt with? Right then and there, like all the things that were said, the Most High said to Moses, "Go and tell them to make this on the tabernacle." Like all of these things are instructions that the Lord was giving Moses for that period of time. Clouds, chariot, chariots. Oh, remember after Yahweh Shah was with the disciples forty days and nights. Oh yeah. He went up into the cloud. Yeah, I'm about to say Acts one. So I see they have a drawing of um. <laughs> Caesar Bourget just on a, on a cloud is going up like that. He's like, <laughs> it's the same way I'm going up, it's the same way I'm going to come back, which is Revelation 1 and 7. Come up with a cloud. So, what is that in Acts? Acts 1, it's an angel talking to us. Uh, Acts 1, verse 7. Yeah, Acts 1, and 11. All right. Uh, actually, uh, 9 to 11. Acts 1, 9 to 11. 9 to 11. Oh, Exodus 24, 18. He went into the midst of the cloud. So, like, not just into a cloud like that. There, and they're flying plane and they're flying through the clouds, you know? And they're flying through the clouds. So, yeah, we, we're going to experience a little turbulence. So we into the midst of the clouds now, and they fly into the clouds, and they don't see anything. They just, <laughs> it's always just missing. Also, when Tim Tom had the temple built, I think on the opening day of it, a cloud came in. And that's what they said. Yeah. And they said, we can't go up there. So, is it safe to say that the cloud can be the chariot? The cloud can be a cloud, as the chariot sometimes will reside in it. Yeah. So we talk about like visuals, like if you remember the independent day, I was about to say that. When the thing first came through, you see how it's like breaking them, coming through like you know, like yeah, a, like a cloud. meteor. It's got the cloud around it, and outside of the cloud, you didn't see the blowing. Right machine right. come out of the cloud. So the chariots manifested themselves like that too. Right. What's interesting about as you say that, um going too deep. So uh, NASA uh, years ago used to track the storm and they used to show objects which were the resemble chariots coming into the storms. And this other storm that was going over and causing wreaking havoc, and then when it was hot, then they they showed it from space that the chariots would leave. Yeah, they was talking about recently. They were too. Right? Yeah, I remember saying that, but like I said, now they don't have as much. I don't know for whatever you know, national secrecy or whatever. They don't they don't allow those types of uh, images to be uh, broadcast or anything. Or they don't share that. So before they used to late night, two o'clock in the morning, you checking it out. <laughs> And they show these things coming on in their on their shows, but I don't they don't do it as much. Like sometimes even they'll have like the live, like NASA has a live feed. Yeah. Some of it they'll uh but I guess maybe there's a delay, but they'll cut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go to commercial. Yeah, let's cut. yeah sometime I would look at the moon. Is a chariot on the moon, and, and they're looking at the moon, and think just moving here and moving there and moving there. Like, what? What is that? Yeah, there's that YouTube video where it's it's hard to say. Okay, can we show that without a shadow of a doubt because it's legit. But they're like in space, and they got nowhere. You just start seeing like yes. all these little things that start moving in different directions. And the guys just talking like normal, like 
Yep, Houston. Shh. Yep, we got some going on here. Shh. <laughs> like it's like, it's just like very matter of fact. It's like we're following stuff moving around. What? It's, like, it's not like it's a media where it's coming into the atmosphere. It's like first it's still then it's going like this, and then sometimes they kind of go around. Yeah. So it's like, what, what is going on here? Like, how you just moving here, there, yeah. not and not just one different one moving right. different places. Like, what is that? How does that fly? <laughs> Let's try to find out. I don't see any fumes coming out, only gas at the end coming off, and trails or whatever. How is that? In a second, like, uh, uh, further on the long run, you read further down in Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, it goes into, he, used to, he described it as a wheel. And he said that it, was, it was as if it was a wheel within a wheel. That connects with what Daniel saw when he saw, remember, the Most High Ancient of Days sitting on his throne? He said how his hair was like a pure wool. And he says his wheels were like burning fire. So Daniel and Ezekiel described it like a wheel. Like you were saying, using stuff that they were familiar with then. To compare to the devices that they're looking at, and I think even Zechariah he called it a flying roll. Think of like the, the scroll, but like being yeah. a small one. They had the scriptures that you roll out. So it looked like a flying roll thing, right? So he uses something that they were familiar with to describe what they're seeing. Yeah. Amazing. That like was somebody say. Probably one of the chariots too. Oh, yeah. But they call it as a curse. This is this curse. Mm -hmm. So like wow, this is, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that ends the book of Exodus. And this week coming up, well, next reading and ne and this week is coming up. It's gonna be the memorable blowing of the trumpets and the new moon. It's gonna be Tuesday night. And. Uh, next Sabbath reading is where is it? What is it? Revelation twenty twenty one. That's the next Sabbath reading. It's interesting for myself anyway that's like oh yeah I, I, i'm gonna you know like, i'm gonna do the service like let me read this thing like 10 times you know really don't make notes and thing like that but it's when i'm not doing the service like i read it one time you know but i should read it like i'm gonna do the service something you know i should be able to read it like that and read it and read it and do my regular readings also because sometimes my tenant's like yeah when sunday comes like and tomorrow, then Friday night, you're like cramming everything. It's like, I'm gonna read it. Keep my eyes open, you know. What are you doing all week? Watching TV, watching some, you know, thing that made me laugh or something, you know. Involving stuff with all kinds of stuff. Next thing you know, the week is done. That's the blessing with the most high has walls that forces to come together. Because, you know, Israel left to themselves, even for the most disciplined of brothers and sisters, it's, you know. And Musa said, no, I command you all to come together before me during these times. Imagine we have like a whole year where there's no time to come together. Israel would just be, you know, <laughs> off doing their own thing. Like I said, in Judges, in those days, there was no king. Israel did that which was right in their own eyes. <laughs> there's, a, there's a line in the way. I'm not going out there. <laughs> right? What is that scripture? It's a, it's a line out there. I'm not going out there. And like a hinge upon the bed, right? Now be like a hinge is like. Well, uh, that's, what, yeah. that's not so much going into that, but while that could happen, <laughs> I mean, it's just, that's just kind of going into sloth in general. It's yeah, slothful. Uh, a lot of stuff is like slothful too, right? Read the scriptures, you know, read it ahead of time. Read it to so you like. Oh, what do we read it today? We come to the Sabbath service. Well, um, what do we read it today? Oh, oh, really? Let me read it now. You know, be ahead, and prepare because if you're gonna go and do and do a do a test, because imagine if it was like a class, and every week there's a test. It's like I'm gonna make sure I cram and I study. 
instead of waiting for the last day to, to kind of cram overnight and trying to take the take, take the test, you know. Slowly retention. All right. So hope to see a lot of people in this Tuesday. I'm off. So all day. Cram do some reading about the new moon and remember blowing up the trumpet. All right. Shalom Israel, stay for the closing prayers. Somebody get the blind. Malak. Barakata Yahawa, Bahasham Yawashai, Ashara, Netalanawa, Haria, Hagapan, Tawada, Aman, La, Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawashai, At Yasha Allah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, that give to us the fruit of the vine. Thank you, so be it, to Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, with Israel. I might want. Panya, Jerusalem, Stand and Face Jerusalem. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Babakasha, Shamai, Lanawa, Aitha, Yam Yan, Aitha, Shalak, Maika Allah, Wahala Ayam, Tazwadakya, La, Shamar Ayam, Barak, Rapa, Makan, Wa Kazayak, Banya, Yasha Allah, Washalak, Lanawa, Yarbium, Takama, Rabium, the Ike, Rabium, Baina, Rabium, Sablamwa, Rabium, Amawan, Rabium, Aqua, Rabium, Ahabium, Rabium, Rakanaya, no. Agana, Rakanaya, Wasala, Kal, Katayim Nawa, Larakia, Weasha Allah, Tom Yad, Waiwalam, Basham, Yahawasha, the water, our month. Yahawa name of Yahawasha, please listen to us. Now, right now, send Michael and the ain't and the righteous. Power angel to watch over, bless, heal, 
protect and make strong the children of Israel and send to us much wisdom, much knowledge, much understanding, much patience, much faith, much brotherhood, much love, much spiritual protection, and forgive all our sins. For the brothers and Israel, always and forever, in the name of Yahweh Shai, thank you, so be it. Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Barak Nawa, Wea Sharala, Wabati Sapari, Shamai, Yasharala, Yahweh, Allahai Nawa, Yahweh. Oh, God. Oh, God. <clears throat> Here are Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Oh, oh Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, bless us and Israel and the house of books. Shemaya Sharala Yahweh Allah. Uh here is all the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. All right. Shalom on the line. Have a blessed Sabbath.